Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the Why Bother podcast. I'm Phil. <laughs> I'm Michelle. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in. Yeah, we switched names, guys. Um, we actually, we did that legally yesterday. So that is our legal names. Now I am now Phil. And I'm Michelle. Mm-hmm. Um, we are wearing each other's clothing, too. So um, Quite true. Mm-hmm. No. You look so good in a dress. <laughs> I don't wear dresses. Seriously, don't wear dresses. Okay. Um, now that that fiasco is over, I'm sure everybody knows um, that actually didn't happen. So, <laughs> current events. Okay, this is sad. A New Jersey couple, and um, for you guys listening, if you don't know, we live in South Jersey. We are almost literally, because I'm not going to use the word literally when it's not literal, but almost literally a stone's throw away from Philly. Like, I can walk down two blocks. I think I said this before on one of the other podcasts. Um, I can walk down two blocks and see the bridge to Philly. Which bridge is that again? I always... Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman. Um, yeah, so we are right, right, you know, um, South Jersey goes for like, um, all Philly teams for like sports and all. And North Jersey goes for like all New York teams. Did you know that baby? Yes. Like New York Giants and yeah. all that. And we're like Eagles and yeah. you know, Flyers and Phillies. You know, the Giants actually play in New Jersey. It's not, their, their stadium is not in, in New York. It's actually in New Jersey. Honestly, I don't know if I knew that or not, but you know what? They've been saying about the Redskins, how they're going to um, change the name yeah. of the Redskins because it's, you know, racist. Mm-hmm. And how I feel about that is, what do I don't, I don't care if it hurts people, change the fucking name. It gives a shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if it, if it offends people, it's saying that it offends, which would be like the Native Indians, Native Americans, right? Yeah. Then just fucking change it. It gives a shit. You know, mm-hmm. if it's red... Washington fuck nuts. Who gives a shit, right? I would bet on the fuck nuts. Would you not? I mean, that'd be fun. Could I have a hundred dollars on the fuck nuts to win? It sounds like a plan. Yeah, it's pretty funny. All right, this is not funny though. A New Jersey couple. Um, I just actually saw this, baby. A New Jersey couple died hours apart from each other. They were together. I think married for like God. 60 years or something, 60 something years. The New Jersey couple died hours apart from each other just after losing their son two days before that. Wow. And that's all COVID, all three of them. Mm -hmm. That is so sad. You know, it doesn't matter that they're in New Jersey. I'm just saying that that, that is where it said it was from, but wherever, I mean, that is God, you know? Yeah. It's terrible. I wanted to say that a person, because I told you this like yesterday, I think, while you were in work, and this is something I don't usually talk about because I'm such an animal lover. I I might say like, oh, I hate that person. And I honestly, I hardly ever say that. The only reason I'm saying that now is because I realized that yesterday, not yesterday, the other, the last podcast we did, I said, I hate that bitch talking about Tori Amos. Uh-huh. And and I don't obviously don't hate her, but I don't even take the word lightly. I was surprised that word even came out of my mouth, you know. Mm-hmm. But my point is that there is actually somebody that I do hate. A person that I do, if you can call him a person, I don't. But um, I told you the other day, and that's Kim Jong Un. Yeah. North Korea fuck, making all the uh, or he's calling for all the pet dogs. Of all the people in, I guess North Korea would be a separate country, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. To, um, he wants all the dogs because, I, I forget why he said, it's some fucking stupid reason. It, at first I thought it might have to do something with the virus, you know? Mm-hmm. Maybe he thought that they carried the virus and people were saying that before, but it's been debunked. But um, it's not that. 
it was something like really dumb. Uh, I saw a print of a uh, thousand and one Dalmatians and thought he was Corella de Corella Deville. Oh, I would take Corella Deville over him any day. Anyway, I, I you guys can read up on it because now it's saying like what he wants to do with the I I can't I can't get into that, but you guys can read up on it and please feel free to hate him as much as I do. Awesome. Um, I was watching Rogan today, right? Uh -huh. And today it was uh, David Blaine. And anybody who doesn't know, which I'm sure everybody knows that he's the magician, he let Rogan, he had Rogan stick an ice pick through his, through his arm. And I haven't finished watching this one yet, but, um, it, oh God, it was, ugh. There, there's got to be a trick to it, but if you of course you, there is. You look at it though, and Rogan's pushing it in, and I don't believe in all that magic bullshit. Go fuck yourself. But he, I think he's just. Uh, it's all an illusion, all of it. I think he's just batshit fucking crazy. That's what I think. Because he does endure things, like there's endurance as well, uh -huh. and I think that that and he likes both. He was like frozen in ice and he's held, you know, was in the tank for a while. He does endurance. He does do that. But he does, quote, magic, you know, mm -hmm. too. But I don't know if the ice pick was endurance or I, or if there's a trick to it. If you watch it, I think you would think twice, too. I don't think so. It's, he's an illusionist. No, it's an I illusion. Know, but there's, I don't know how you. I bet it. half of the endurance things are illusions as well. It's all. It's all an illusion. Am I an illusion? No. No. This world feels like an illusion. This year. Yeah. Feels like a fucking illusion. Um. Okay. So I wanted to tell everyone my magic trick because I'm a magician. Okay. Okay. Okay, so obviously it's not magic, it's math. So many people might know this one, I don't know, but I've been doing this since I was little because, um, I don't know, my parents showed me or some something, and I never um, I never stopped. Like, people loved, they were like, how, how did you? So I've done it to you. I don't even know if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay, so everybody pick a number in your head, and it could be any number in the world, but just know that if it's like, one to ten or one to twenty, it's going to be easier for you to do the math unless you're a mathematician or you have a calculator or something like that. Go for it. I don't, it could be one to a billion. I don't care. Okay, so when you have the number, I want you to double it. And then once you have that answer, I want you to add six to it. And then once you have that answer, I want you to cut it in half. And then once you have that answer, I want you to subtract it from the number you started with in the very beginning. And now your ending answer should be three. If it's not three, and I'm not trying to like say I'm awesome and any kind of math magician at all because I suck at math. If it's not three, you did something wrong. That I know. And um, I can do it and get different answers all the time you know, different ending answers and it will still be that person's thing. But there's a technique and I'll tell you guys how to do it on one of the podcasts and then you can like freak people out. It's pretty cool. Um, okay. So also current events, the, my pillow guy who's, um, also batshit fucking bananas is back in the news. Did you know that? You know, he was on there before, right? Like buddying up with Trump and like, yeah, whatever. He's, um, he's a religious, like, freak. Mm hmm And I don't have anything against anybody with religion. Again, most of my whole life I was, you know, Catholic. I was brought up Catholic and me my first communion and all that. But, um, so I have nothing against religion except for when you hurt people. It's a different story. He's now pushing this, uh, new drug. He says, absolute, is an absolute miracle. Anderson Cooper, um interviewed him and it was it was a good interview we were just yelling at him and stuff but um it's a miracle miracle cure is what he's saying comes from some kind of poisonous plant or some shit did you hear about that slightly and he has stock in it surprise surprise and he's arguing with anderson cooper 
saying that, um, well, it is a miracle. And they did this test on a thousand people. And Cooper's like, what thousand people? And what? Uh, it's just funny. Cooper kicks his ass, basically. Okay. Okay. Um, wow, you must be really, uh, tired tonight. Yeah, getting there. I'm not really hearing much from you over there. <laughs> You're all quiet. People are going to think I beat you and stuff. You and, do. And abuse you and make you, uh, that's right. Now go to your room. No, don't. Don't go. You whip me with a wet noodle and say, oh. get behind the microphone. Is that Make right? the podcast. Oh, my God. Get to the editing. I'm so sorry, you guys. Next time, we will wait for him to fall asleep. Um, oh, uh, a California resident was diagnosed with the plague. And I know that that was happening in, like, other countries somewhere, like, here and there. They've been mm-hmm. popping up. But a California resident was diagnosed with the plague. So, sum it up. We're, we're all going to die. Okay? Yep. Okay. Okay, I wanted to play a clip. You yeah. know. Cause I'm, I do that. Cause I seriously, I watch shit on my phone all the time and I, um, I get so sucked in on certain things that I, um, yeah, I'm not into Car- the Kardashians or anything like that. I don't fucking care, but I have, um, she's lying. She's <laughs> very much into the Kardashians. That is one of the most insulting things that you've ever said about me. <laughs> okay. And I've been called some shit. <laughs> That's pretty fucked up. Yeah, he's lying, guys. He's a pathological liar. He's been diagnosed. I diagnosed him. All right, so anyway, this is something I'm really interested in. Um, do you guys remember, I'm sure you do, with uh, Drew Barrymore and... What the hell's his name? For 50 First Dates. I always want to say Polly Shore, but it's... No. The one uh, who did uh, the... He was on Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Yes. He did the Hanukkah song. Yes. <laughs> I love that song. 50 First Dates is where... Um, Lucy Whitmore, I think was her real name. And there really is a woman, Lucy Whitmore, that that is based on. So you guys can look her up on YouTube. I think she's Australian or British or something. And I was actually going to play that one, but it's it's not really um, something I would put on here. It's not, that one wasn't long enough. I couldn't find one long enough. And it's hard, a little harder to understand. And she's really quiet. It's mostly her husband talking for her. But anyway, um... This is a true story, and I've been following this guy for, well, watching the same documentary for years. His name is Clive, C-L-I-V-E, Waring, W-E-A-R-I, W-E-A-R-I-N-G. I just didn't want to spell it wrong. Anyway, you could just YouTube the man with seven-second memory. Apparently, he, um, a long time ago, like 30 years ago or something, he contacted, contracted the herpes virus or whatever Uh and he um it got through like you know how sometimes that certain things it's like one in a million but it happens can get through the uh, blood brain barrier and get into you know your brain well this did and he um well what he probably contracted wasn't herpes in that case because herpes is too large to fit the whole point of the blood brain barrier is things are either small enough and fit through it or are well i guess his blood brain barrier could be different than other people so yeah that oh, could work all right um um are you done conversating with yourself it's no a wonderful conversation with yourself absolutely but i'm gonna just jump in here real quick although i do enjoy you talking mm-hmm. um you're wrong basically you're wrong that uh, the herpes um, simplex five, whatever the fuck it is, um, does cross from time to time the blood brain barrier and make people go woo woo crazy. And, you know, and it just takes like if they get it in time, they if they get it in time now, back mm-hmm. when he was. Are you when, sure you're not talking about syphilis? Maybe that too. But I'm telling you, this is the herpes thing. Okay. Okay. And syphilis is syphilis. Uh, it generally you're causes right. madness. No, I did hear that. You're absolutely right because I saw a show on that too about a woman who got syphilis and she started losing her mind and they had to give her. But I'm telling you, this is like a one in a million shot that the herpes thing will cross the blood brain mm-hmm. barrier thing. Whatever it says it all in the documentary. I've only seen it about five thousand times. But um, but this is just a clip from that and this poor guy, serious seven second memory or less. 
I don't know how he does it. He um, he has a wife, and then it got too hard for her, so she actually she did leave him because they were having the same conversation every seven seconds. So she left him because she couldn't get anywhere with him, and then he was so frustrated, as you can imagine. Mm-hmm. But um, then when she left, she moved all over different jobs and looked for you know to be with someone else, and she couldn't find anyone she like that she loved as much as him. So she went back and remarried him. And um, they live apart because he has to be in a home, but she absolutely loves him, Mm -hmm. you know, and he loves her and he does know her face, you know, Um, I see, I don't don't know if you heard any of it, but just play the clip so everybody else can hear it. If Clive went out of the front door, unsupervised, unaccompanied, he would have, it would be like being separated from a spaceship. It would be like if you were spacewalking and the rope broke, he would have no way of getting back, ever. But does Clive know his name? Yes. Does he know how old he is? No. Does he know where you live? No, no idea. Does he know your job? No, no idea. Does he know the day of the week? No. Does he know the date? No. Can he read a book? No, because he can't remember the sentence before last. Can he watch a film? No. He'll watch the rugby or he'll watch the cricket. Uh, he, or he won't know who's playing or what the score is, but each stroke, you know, each try, is satisfying for him to watch. What does it mean to you when Deborah comes to visit? Heaven on earth arrives. And what does it mean to you when Deborah can't come and visit? Well, I don't know. I've never been conscious since I've been ill. I don't know what I've been thinking when she's not here. I'd never seen her before either. Never You've heard a word. Now. Yes. I've never seen any human being since I've been ill. You're the first four people I've seen in, what, 30 years? And if you're unconscious, you don't like it much, do you? What does being unconscious mean? Same as death. No difference between day and night, no thoughts at all. Day and night the same. And what does love mean, Mr. Waring? Zero in tennis and everything in life. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> hmm. That's all it's about, love, isn't it? Everything. Yeah, so that's um, sad, you know? Very much so. No, it is. It's sad. I can't even imagine living like that. But, yeah, amnesia is very sad, but interesting to me. I wanted to ask you... Uh Uh-huh. Um... The Eagles, and I don't mean the team, I mean the music. The band. band, yes. Um, they do Hotel California. Yes. And I know, like, the lyrics, and the lyrics, and the lyrics are weird. But the song yeah. is fucking great. Right. And it's a classic. Like, everybody, what the hell is it about? Like, a haunted hotel? Yeah. Is mm-hmm. that what it is? Yeah. So he's just driving and he, my yeah. eyes grew heavy and my sight grew dim. I had to stop for the night. So he had to stop before he fell asleep. Yeah. On the road. Yeah. And then he went in and I, I know that one of the parts is um, they stabbed him with this steely knives, but he just, just can't, can't kill the kill beast. beast. What, what the what? <laughs> it, and well, something go ahead a lot of songs don't make sense i mean it doesn't have some to of make the ones sense. that don't make any sense are like the a big hit yeah mm-hmm. which is weird do you know that that one song from um blues travelers that they sang that is purposely does not make sense it's like i can sing it's the words are like i can sing whatever i want to well no that makes perfect sense it does not the it doesn't make sense it just it's just making fun of the fact, fact that it doesn't make sense no it, it that makes sense the heart brings you back the hook oh it's the hook yes the hook why, I, why have i been singing Other, the heart the, for the last 30 years He's, it's just a comment on the fact that nobody really listens to what the words mean. Uh-huh, as long as it's got a good rhythm. Yeah, I get yeah. all that. But I really thought it was the heart. Are you sure it's not the heart? I'm absolutely sure. The song is called The Hook, or just Hook, actually. A lot I have the of CD people in the have basement. heard me sing that song. And I've always well, sang loudly sung and wrong. proudly heart. And no one has ever corrected me. 
Well, I am sorry, but it is Maybe they were laughing at me behind my back. I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it. They were probably singing hard as well. (laughs) Probably. I'm just saying probably to make myself feel better, okay? Okay. Okay. I have a trivia question for you. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Buckle up, buddy. Okay? Okay. In an average lifetime. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. The heart beats how many gallons of blood? Is it 84? I'm going to give you multiple choice, okay? Okay. Is it 84 million gallons in an average lifetime? Is it 53 million gallons in an average lifetime? Or is it 40 million gallons in an average lifetime? Now, do you want me to read just the numbers A, B, and C again? Would you like to give me a minute to calculate? Sure. All right. Okay, guys. So we did pause. You said you have an answer? Yes. Okay. And you didn't Google anything? Nope. Is it 84, 53, or 40? I'm going to say 84 because my estimate is way higher than that. It is 177 million gallons. But I, I'm basing it on just a, an educated guess on how much blood is pumped per beat. So because of that, I am uh, my estimate came out way high. So, so I'm you're say saying eight, 84 yes. million gallons in yes. average lifetime. Yes. Okay. Do you think you're right or no? Uh, yes. What do you guys think? You think he's right? Eh, nope. Nope. No, it's 53. 53. 53 million gallons of blood the heart pumps in um, an average lifetime. Okay. Okay. Now you know. The more you know. You never you never know. You might really need to know that one day. So I keep singing in my head, although since we've been talking about Hotel California, that's been in my head. But, um, the, when I was just a baby, my mama told me, son, do you know what it is? Yeah. Always be a good boy. Don't ever play with guns. What's the next part? Uh, I don't know. (laughs) But I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. Anyway, I wanted to ask you, what is the name that people call him other than Johnny Cash? Like, the man in black. The man in black. Um, yeah, so I'm um, going to play a clip from when him and everybody knows, um, obviously, most people, um, except for like younger. Uh, Johnny and Johnny Cash and June Carter and the story, um, the movie, Walk the Line. Although there is a parody out of it, which is fucking hilarious what is that well that's a parody of many that's a parody of many yeah you're right but the main but the main part of it yeah that's that's hilarious i love that movie oh my god so do i i forget the name it's it's walk hard the dewey cox story story. it's walk hard yes walk hard but um yeah but this one is just the um walk the line anyway everybody in the world saw it i'm sure but anyway this is from when um Johnny and June, when they were much older, after he quit drugs and stuff like that, are in New Zealand, and it's before they do a show together, and it just seemed cool to, um, just to see them together, you know what I mean? The last song he did, like, this was, she was still alive when he did this song, June. Yeah. was still alive when he did the uh, Nine Inch Nails Hurt song. Yeah. Which is phenomenal. Um, don't you think? Do you like it? Yeah. Okay. And she was in the video, remember? Mm-hmm. And then not long after, uh, she passed away. And then not long after that, he passed away. And this was all right right after that, you know. He didn't even want to do that song, you know. Yeah, I would figure. And then it turned out that it was one of the best things that he's ever done. Yeah. From what everybody says. And it is. It is beautiful. The video, everything. Um, you know, okay, so Trent, Trent Renzer. Uh, who's that? He he's the guy that wrote it. That's, oh, that's the Nine Inch Nails guy. Okay. Uh, who also dated Tori Amos? Um, oh, <laughs> really? Yes, really. There was a guy. Not to cut you off, real quick. There was uh, two guys on Rogan Lake. 
you know, Rogan, this is going to keep coming up your name. Then I'm going to need, I'm going to need some kind of recognition for doing that. I feel bad because apparently his, his, um, rates, his ratings aren't up, you know? Yeah, we're stealing all his people. <clears throat> no, he never had people. And I feel bad. I mean, Joe Rogan is great. It's just, can you guys please listen to him? Just give it a pity listen. What was I saying? Uh, well, you. I was talking oh, about sorry. Trent Renzer and how he, uh, but you interrupted. <laughs> but <laughs> Trent Renzer... Um, <laughs> Really, 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 although it was a very personal song that he wrote when he was in a really bad place in his life, he absolutely adored um, Johnny Cash's version. And he was adored it, but was also sad because he felt it was no longer his. It was, it, he oh, said it was, wow. was like losing a child almost. Oh, geez. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, musicians can be kind of um, dramatic. Yes, uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, I get it. Like people say, like that was my baby, you know. Yeah, he was being literal, not quite literal, but <clears throat> close enough. And is he still alive? This guy. Yeah. What's his name? Trent Renzer. What year was it that Johnny Cash died? Of uh, the two thousand five, I think. I don't know. I can't remember. <clears throat> Hmm. Well, you'd be closer than me. Um, I don't know. It's sad, but it was just interesting to see this clip. You you guys can um, YouTube it. Like, I'll play a tiny bit of it, but you guys can YouTube it just to see them sitting next to each other, and he's clean, and they're older, and um, they're he's happy, and she's happy, and I don't know. It's um, but you could just YouTube um, Johnny and June interview. Whatever Johnny Cash and June Carter interview, and it'll come up. But can you play it for everyone? Yes, I can. That's my job. What is it about June? Can I ask you about Johnny? What What is it about Johnny's face when people look at it, particularly American people look at it? What are they seeing? What is it about Johnny's face and his voice that rings such a bell in the American heart? Well, he has this big scar on the side of his face, which kind of makes some people believe that he's been in a fight or two, and that inhibits you right away. You think maybe he won that one. It's not too big, not too bad of a scar, but I mean, it's kind of a rugged, raw kind of face, but it's got a lot of strength to it. And there's a heart behind it, you know, down here a little bit further. <laughs> you had a rough time of it. I think you described yourself as a chemically dependent person. You well, say that yeah. you, Johnny, you say that you lost interest in, in, in what you were doing. You rediscovered it. You fixed yourself up. How did you do that? Well, it took a lot of prayer and a lot of perseverance and a lot of grit. Uh, drugs take total control. Blue Doctor and drugs took uh, total control of me where I had no control and uh, maybe not care about anything and practically nobody for a while there. But uh, by the grace of God and with help, with the help from people that love me, I got help and, uh, and uh, got off them and loved the straight life, the clean life. Well, Feels it good. So anyway, yeah. Um... It's uh, low-key, I guess, that interview, you could say. But um, it's really cute to hear them together and to see them together if you guys want to YouTube it. You know, Johnny and June, there's a um, song we used to listen to when we first got together. Uh-huh. Remember, I think I introduced you to it. It's a country song. It's called Johnny and June. Yeah. And it's a girl singing th- about her wanting a love like theirs because it was like true love, you know? Anyway, um, don't squish your eyeballs at me. Is this true love? What are we doing here? Is this just smoke and mirrors or? Sure, yeah. Eight years of smoke and mirrors. Over eight, over eight years? Yes. Uh-huh. I wanted to ask you about... Um, and I don't even know what brought this up. I think maybe a dream I had. Or something which by the way I had a dream the other night actually it was like five nights ago that when people say an earwig that just means a song stuck in your head it's an earworm earworm an earwig is an actual bug right yes okay 
I had a dream that, and I guess they were supposed to be earwigs, but they looked kind of like, almost exactly like um, praying mantises, uh -huh. right? And they were like as long, I mean, praying mantises can be really long, really short, but they were like medium, right? Uh -huh. In my dream. And they were like, not dead, but they were like flat enough to like stick into my ear. I just had to keep pulling these ear wigs out of my ear that looked like praying mantises that kept being in both my ears. And it gave me my tweezers and I'm like, keep pulling them out. And, and you just kept pulling them out. And I didn't understand how they kept getting in there. That's it. The end. Okay. Now what I wanted to ask you about, and again, I think this was a dream. Parts of the world that are dark, like dark for six months mm -hmm. and then bright for six months. Is that like Antarctica? Yeah, it's up around the, the North Pole. Is it the only place? Isn't it like two spots in, on the planet, like one opposite of the other? I'm actually not sure what happens at the South Pole. Uh, it's not necessarily the North Pole itself. Uh, the, the, the North Pole itself does do that, but nobody lives there. Um, mm -mm. Up above the Arctic Circle. Excuse me, I think Santa Claus would have something to say about that. Yeah. Okay, so go on. Those elves, too. Yeah, you can't just leave out an entire species of people and... True. Okay, All Very right. true. Fat men who eat cookies. I'm, I'm sorry, Santa. Uh -huh, I, I apologize sorry. wholeheartedly for leaving you out. He still believes in Santa. <laughs> above the Arctic Circle. Uh, is typically where that where that happens in Iceland, Greenland, um, Norway. Don't the poles switch or something? No, the poles stay the same no matter or what. Or the magnetic field within the poles or something? Uh, no, they they uh, well, yes and no. Um, the poles supposedly have switched. You know, many million years ago, but they haven't switched in in humankind's time. They've been the the same ever. You know. Well, I heard on the science like things I get on Google that I look through. You know. Yeah, we discussed those last time. We did. <laughs> yes. Well, where was I? What's that? Where was I? I was saying that uh, both. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson and those sites. Oh, it's not I, did I, sites. Did I say it was Neil deGrasse Tyson? I did not say anything yes, but about I Neil said, deGrasse I, Tyson I, this time. I, All I said was science. I said the same thing about those sites. Okay, it's the science site, though. It's yes. a science site. And? <laughs> and? And what do you think the science site is in the job of doing? Uh, giving you science. To what purpose? To, for people to know. What are you talking about? To sell advertisements. Well, I understand what you're saying, but I, I do follow up on things. Now, if you let me finish, I was going to say, and you can go back and listen that there was like a but in there. But you, you, but you rudely interrupted me so i guess payback is our bitch for me huh not really no okay um all right you know what i don't care i i don't i don't care now i don't care anymore that's what you did <laughs> shame okay you know how we used to call eskimo people eskimos right yeah and do they really live in igloos and eat blubber? Like, I know that people eat blubber on, like, in Alaska and stuff. Yeah. Because I've seen, or Antarctica or whatever, because yeah. I've seen the show on that. Yeah. And they actually eat, like, um, whale blubber that's, yeah. they eat it frozen. Yeah. Ugh. God. Ugh. Okay. So, um, how, first of all, how would that be good for you? It's, uh, Fat is actually a, a very... I know, um, but wouldn't it have to be cooked or only if it was meat? You can eat plenty of things raw. Yeah, sushi. Ugh. The only raw things I like are vegetables. And the... Anyway, my, my point of this whole thing was, um, I guess just to ask you, would you ever live there? 
would I ever live in a yeah. place where, where it's dark where, for six months and light for six months? Like, it wouldn't be my preference, but if I were forced to, yes, I, I could live there. Yes, forced meaning that's where you'll find a good job, or forced meaning people take you at gunpoint. Forced meaning I could find a good job. Really? Yeah. Oh, baby, don't go there. I'm I love you, but I'm not <sighs> following you. There. Well, it depends. It's not like there's there's not a lot of people there, so it's. It's not like the the less people there are, the less jobs there's going to be. So it's not an option. Nobody's going to offer me, you know, money to move out there and, you know, an excellent amount of money to to move there. It, it's it, it, it's not going to happen. Yeah, you don't like hypotheticals. Yeah. It's so annoying. I think that there's a lot to find out about a person in hypotheticals. And I think it's a fun hypotheticals i do i think hypotheticals are just crap because you're you're asking if things weren't the same would they not be the same of course they would <laughs> no i think you're more asking if things were not the same that brought us to brought someone to a certain point would things still be the same not would they not be the same again. That's like a double negative. But does that make sense? To you, sure. I don't like you anymore. Sorry. So anyway, Eskimos. Uh -huh. um, they're really called, like there is a name. like a Inuits. Inu Inuits. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're all PC. Look at you. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> Okay. Well, right. there or aboriginals that that's the piece. Yeah, that's term. an older. But no, that's... I think Inuits is the word I was looking for. So, thanks for that. You're good for something, okay? Okay. All right. Um, yeah, good luck putting all this together, okay? Yeah, I've got a large editing job ahead of me, guys. All right. So, um, the last thing is Again, I try to always do something kind of cute and, I guess, uplifting at the end. Um, this is a clip of a little girl who calls 911 for her daddy. He was um, having a heart attack, and uh -huh. this little girl, her name is uh, Savannah. Uh -huh. And, um, I mean, you can just YouTube Savannah calls 911 for her daddy because I, I only have a tiny bit of this on there, but it is so cute. And she's so intelligent. I think she's like... I think she says she's like four or something, but it's really cute. The five-year-old girl remained calm and collected, probably because she did not know just how critical the phone call could be for her dad, but also because the 911 operator did his part. Um, my dad can't hardly breathe. Okay, hold on a second, okay? Okay. How old are you? I'm five years old. Okay, what's your name? Savannah. Okay, Savannah, hold on. I'm getting them dispatched, okay? Okay. You need to come real fast. Okay, Savannah, I have them on the way. Is your daddy still awake? Yeah. Okay. Is your front door unlocked, Savannah? Uh, is the front door unlocked? No. Okay, Savannah, can you go unlock that front door for me? Sure. Okay. Okay, we need to Don't worry, Dad. Ask him if this has ever happened before. Has this ever happened no, so far so good. Yes, adorable. Um, everybody, I think that's a cut. Um, the phone number, if you guys want to text or call, remember if you call the number for the podcast, I turned the ringer off by the way, so this way, you know, because it rings 10 times and I can't get a hold of the phone company to change that yet. So the number, if anyone wants to call or text, you can leave a message, text, phone message, um, is 856-882-9670. I almost forgot it. Or you can email y.bother.pod at gmail.com. It's a letter. The Y is a letter. You're getting so good at that. Why? Because we love you. Oh, my God. Please cut that out, okay? Okay. Okay. We do love you guys, though. And um, I guess that's it. 
All right, guys. Um, I'm Phil. I'm Michelle. We will talk to you on... It's Wednesday night. We'll talk. No, tonight's Tuesday. Tonight's Tuesday. Tonight's... We're recording for Wednesday. Okay. We'll talk to you Sunday night. Okay. Bye. Bye, guys.